On the 2nd of October 1968, Mexican government forces murdered a still unknown number of students in Tlatelolco in Mexico City. This event is known as the Tlatelolco Massacre. To explain how and why this happened, you need to understand what the 1960s were like in Mexico, as well as what 1968 was like in Mexico City. So throughout this video, I'm going to be using the term you could argue quite a lot. The reason for this is that the facts behind what happened during the Tlatelolco massacre are still being disputed. What the vast majority of evidence suggests and what the vast majority of Mexicans believe is that the government were way too heavy-handed and they were definitely at fault here. So I want to try and show that there are two sides of the argument, but myself and most Mexicans actually are of the opinion that the government was wrong here. In 1963, five years before the Tlatelolco massacre, Mexico City won the right to host the Olympic Games. The country's economy was booming thanks to the Mexican miracle mentioned in the last video and Mexico City was beginning to look like a global city. As such, it seemed the perfect place to host the 1968 Olympics. The issue was that in retrospect, it probably wasn't the best place to host the 1968 Olympics. The same PRI government had been in power since the 1920s, despite Mexico supposedly being a democracy and government government corruption was rife. What's more, the economic growth which the Mexican miracle had created was not felt by all Mexicans. Many people remained in poverty no better off than when they were before the economy took off, and labour protections were being stripped away by the government too. You could even argue that the situation for the poor people of Mexico got even worse as Mexico became a capitalist country. Of course, you could also argue that overall this transition was necessary for Mexico to become the country it is today. Whatever your opinion though, the students of Mexico City in 1968 very much felt that all of this was a bad thing. These same students also had an issue with the way the Mexican government was tackling crime. The police reacted violently to dissent and people began to see this as an infringement of their freedoms. Once again, you could also argue that the police's actions during the 1960s were necessary in order to tackle the drugs and the gangs of Mexico and Mexico City. However, that's not how these student protesters saw it and many, many Mexicans living in Mexico City agreed with them, hence why their movement became so powerful and so hard to silence. Eventually, this anger led to several protests across Mexico City from July 1968 to October 1968. The biggest one of these wasn't the one in Tlatelolco, but the one in the Zacalo, right in the centre of Mexico City, on August 27th, 1968. To this day, it remains one of the biggest protests against the Mexican government that has ever happened. These protests contained many kinds of people, but they're often labelled as student protests because the people most vocally unhappy about all of this were the students and the young intellectuals of Mexico City. This was the 60s so it might be tempting to use the word hippie here. However, that makes the stakes seem a lot lower than they were. For example, like elsewhere in the world, the second wave of feminism was breaking out in Mexico in the 1960s. Unlike elsewhere, though, women had only won the right to vote in 1953, a mere 15 years ago to the people of 1968. Like elsewhere, young Mexican students complained about government corruption and political collusion and conspiracy theories about the CIA being the real power behind the throne. Unlike elsewhere, however, these conspiracy theories weren't conspiracy theories at all. In 2017, it's now public knowledge that the CIA sent men like Winston Scott to help the Mexican government suppress violent uprisings. On the one hand, the Mexican government argued that it did need help because it wasn't just gang violence and drugs. There were also kidnappings, bank robberies, and assassinations which were being performed by anti-government groups. On the other hand, the students of Mexico City in 1968 would argue that these anti-government groups were only on the fringes of a more general anti-government feeling. What's more, the charges against the military and the government are much, much worse. The accusations are similar, kidnapping, torture, and murder, but the casualties for the civilians of Mexico were much higher than they were for government workers. As I mentioned in the last video, this whole period has been dubbed the Dirty War. It's a strange name when you think about it because it suggests that other wars are somehow clean. However, it's a name which draws up the right connotations. A dirty war is a war of corruption, of sleaze, and dirt 
can often hide and obscure a lot of things. The violence from Mexican government forces against its people started in 1968 with the Tlatelolco massacre. Some would argue earlier, but it wouldn't stop until the year 2000, though some would argue that it's still ongoing. It was in the year 2000 that Vicente Fox, the first non-PRI president Mexico has had since the 1920s, released a report which he claimed explained what really happened during the Tlatelolco massacre and the 42 years which followed. Is this report biased? Probably. Was it a big political move? Probably. Does that mean the report is all lies? Definitely not. Having had years to consider the Tlatelolco massacre and the years following it, the overwhelming public opinion is that the government and the military were way too heavy-handed. Some pin this more on the military, some pin this more on the government, but very few Mexicans in 2017 believe that the Mexican government's response to anti-government rebels from 1968 to the year 2000 was justified. To make people realise that their movement was much more peaceful than the government's crackdown on them, the student protesters of Mexico City even performed a silent march on 13th of September 1968. On the 2nd of October 1968, 10 days before the Mexico Olympics were due to start, a group of protesters gathered in Tlatelolco Square. By this point, eyewitnesses have claimed that the movement was at its peak. It wasn't just students and young people who were fed up with the abuse of Mexican civilians in the name of suppressing violent rebellion. People of all walks of life joined the cause. You could argue that, even without the Mexico City Olympics, tensions within the government would have boiled over eventually. However, it's impossible to say. What is for certain, though? is that the Mexican government were told that if they couldn't keep control of things, they would lose the Olympics to Los Angeles. What is for certain is that the Tlatelolco massacre happened just 10 days before the Olympics were due to start. What is for certain is that one of the slogans the Mexico City protesters had adopted in the summer and early autumn of 1968 was No queremos Olimpiadas, queremos revolución. We don't want the Olympics, we want revolution. So, how did the massacre actually begin? According to the government's official account at the time, the group of protesters were actually just a small band of rebels who opened fire on the military and the police and who were then quickly arrested. At the time, the Mexican government claimed there had only been four fatalities. We now know that this is false. Many eyewitnesses have since claimed that the military opened fire first. Not only that, but the whole thing seems to have been a premeditated attack by the government in order to kidnap and torture leaders of the protests. After two hours of kidnapping and shooting, an unknown number of protesters were injured and killed by the military and the police. The exact figure varies wildly. As I said, the official count by the government at the time was four but some claim 3,000. Some people claim between 300 and 400, but after 50 years, what we do absolutely know is that at least 40 student protesters were killed. In short, the whole thing is a horrible, horrible tragedy, and the government was wrong to do it. To make matters worse, though, the whole plan worked. After the Tlatelolco massacre, protests pretty much stopped and Mexico City's 1968 Olympics went off pretty much without a hitch. The government's violence and oppression was terrifyingly effective. I've already briefly mentioned what happened in the years that followed, such as the long search for truth and the election of Vicente Fox in the year 2000, but we'll talk more about that in the next video. For now though, thanks for watching. <laughs>